Hi everybody! Well, today I had a request, and I know that I haven't started my tutorial series yet, however, this request was for coloring I just finished. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I forget how I do things after months of not doing them. So I thought it would be best, since this will be a very quick video, hopefully, um, I thought it would be best just to show you guys this quick demonstration. So I, already, I just colored this page, and uh, a friend of mine was really excited about it because she liked how 3D these trees looked. So um, I'm not going to recolor the whole page because, as you can see, I've gone into great detail already with everything so I don't feel the need to repeat the entire page however I can certainly demonstrate how to get this 3d look so what I have here I'm just gonna keep this to the side so you can watch what I'm doing and you can compare so what I have here is just a blank piece of cardstock and this is the same weight and thickness as the paper from the book. So this is, in all intents and purposes, the same exact paper as the book. Um, and so what I'm going to start off first by doing is I'm just going to do a quick little doodle. Oh, if I can find my pen. Let's see if this one will work. Oh. I should throw that away. Okay. Any pen, any pen will do. Here we go. Oh no, that's a metallic pen. <laughs> Where's my paper pastel? The pen. That's an 05, that's too big. Pardon me while I search. Oh, here's a 005 micron will do for now. So let's make sure this is actually working. Yeah, okay. So I have here these these nice trees that I've already done. And actually, oh, after all that, I think I actually did this page in ballpoint pen. So let's back track here. So I have, I'm not going to draw the exact same thing, but I have a bunch of trees. And they are in a big grouping, right? So I have like several, and so I'll just draw another tree here. So the key with this kind of 3D map look is that you want the, the the trees to feel like they're going back in space. So I'm just going to create a couple. I'm not going to make it as big as this guy here. I'm also drawing it a lot larger so that hopefully you can see it easier. Um, let me actually double check that and see. Yeah, I think I could zoom in a little bit more. Oh, that's too much. Sorry, guys. Okay, so that should be a little bit better. So you can still see the trees over here and trees here. Okay, that's better. So as they recede back in space, I like to just throw in some little other trees. And this is what, and it's just like that on the, on the map too. And this kind of helps it give it depth. They can be super simple. This this is very small on the map, so um, I did not do it super detailed. Okay, so I think this little grove of trees should be just fine for our demonstration. So I'm just gonna put a couple more in there. Okay. So the first thing I start off with is just the big fluffy area. Oh, here, let me put in some words so that we can see how I did that. So it's ancient forest. 
Okay. So then uh, I just have here PC909 grass green. So what I did is I just sort of, I start in the darkest area. So in this, in this image, you have the light coming from this direction. Right, so in I'll do it the same here, um, just because for the sake of when well, I think the sun just came out, let me fix this. Um, just for the sake of making it easy for the demonstration, um, I'm gonna light it the same way. However, you could light it in any direction you like. I just I just chose one lighting style for the entire map. So since all of the dark areas that I've already sort of um, I don't know if you can see this. Let me bring it up close. So all of the areas that I've already sort of shaded, you see in here, all these areas, they already have the light coming from this direction. You can see that. So I figured I would keep all of the other elements shaded in the same manner. So that way uh, it wouldn't be, there's, there's no disjointed disconnect between the shading that I've already provided and the new shading and if I'm sniffly I'm really sorry I have a little bit of a head cold that's uh, just from you know life <laughs> okay so I'm gonna just keep going here so I'm gonna show you exactly how I do this so the first layer is really just finding your basic shapes so I'm obviously not gonna do it exactly like how I've already done it because these this contour is slightly different but for the purposes of this demo, it should be just fine. All right. And so after you get a pretty good idea, so around the, the lettering, what I do is just to keep myself from going too far, I'll actually create a very soft light ring and it doesn't have to be perfect. Luckily with the leafy areas in these trees, you can be super messy and it actually looks good. I love it when stuff looks good when you're messy. Okay, so let me just bring this up real close so you can see what I did here. So you can see I just did like a light ring around the name so that way, hopefully I'll remember not to color through it. Um, so that's so that's where how you start. I'm still using the PC um, 909 grass green. Okay. Alrighty, so now I'm going to keep going and shade the entire rest of this grove, if you will, this bunch of, of trees. And I don't know why I start with the leaves first, that's just how I did it in the book. So I figured I'd take you step by step exactly how I did it. Um, I don't think it matters what order you do these things in too much, honestly. Um, you could start on the background first and work your way front. Um, yeah, that's just a matter of preference because it's um, fairly fuzzy and soft. And that's kind of a good look for this area of the page. So I will show you. So right now I'm just sort of very messy actually. And this is how I worked on the original page too. So you can see sometimes my patience levels. Okay, so here I have like another kind of branchy leafy bit happening. And so to keep make it look like this tree is in front of this tree, I'm putting a shadow behind that bunch of leaves and just continuing that shadowy area all the way up towards the top here. This this is what I would consider the top of this tree. And just continue to darken all the shadows around the edges. Now at this point, I probably will come in and do some background color. And the reason why is because it's really hard to tell what colors you're using when you have the white paper as the background, it's just, at least for me, I don't know, I, I might be weird with this, but I have trouble seeing the true colors of things when the paper is white. So that's why you'll see me try to get the, the entire page covered. And I think this is something that has happened 
because I'm a painter first. So um, primarily I try to get the canvas covered as soon as I'm started. Um, so maybe that's where it comes from. I'm not really sure, but I have this big problem with blank paper or blank canvas. Like I kind of freeze up a little bit sometimes if I stare at it too long. So to keep myself from doing that or from having any kind of like, I call it the blank canvas syndrome, where basically you just like can't get past that white. Um, what I'll do is I'll just throw down any color and, um, and then it just helps get me out of that like weird mindset I get in sometimes. So you can see like already, and this is starting to, to form a, like a voluminous shape. So I'm going to finish off coloring the first layer of the trees and then you will see I'm going to jump to the background. So at this point now um, I've got a pretty good idea of where the wording is going to be excluded from the green of the tree. And I will fill that in with a little green but only at the very end. Keep myself from getting it too dark. So what I like to do is I like to work in layers. I start off very light with a light touch and I'm usually pretty messy. And then I work my way and I work in the darkest shadowy areas first. You saw me do that. Um, and then I work my way to the lighter areas, softening up my touch as I go so that even that first light layer is still lighter than the lightest color, if that makes any sense. Basically what I want to do here is just establish the highlights around the entire area. So um, that means that even in the shadows there are highlights, right? So what I'm doing right now is this is the highlight color for the shadowy area, right? And then, so then this right up here, it's almost white. That is the, the shadowy, or the highlight area, I'm sorry, for the light area. So this highlight color, a little bit, sorry. I seem like I can't speak today, so this is gonna be a really interesting tutorial, my bad. Um, I'm gonna keep going though, because I'm already half done, and you guys know I'm human too, so I make mistakes. Um, okay, so after we've got this here going, <laughs> Alright, so I'm pretty happy. That's like the base general look of what I want to do. However, I need to make this look like this. So now what happens is I'm going to darken up and richen the, below the um, foliage line. So what I'm going to do here is, because I like it to be a little bit cooler because it's in the shadow, I'm using PC907 Peacock Green. Um... So this color here has a little bit of blue to it. And so you'll see when I start to color, um, it's a pretty dark color, but then uh, when I hit it with the white pencil later to blend, all of these lovely blue tones that are in this pencil that are just waiting to come out will be unlocked. And that's what's interesting about the white pencil, especially with Prismacolor, is it does change the look of some of the colors once you've applied it over it. Um, and that's just something that I don't know why that happens, but, um, it's just something that's part of the pencils. Uh, but I kind of rather like it as long as you learn how the colors change, you can really adapt and, and make that work for you. Um, so you see here, I'm going right up to the tree trunk line. So the ones that are farther back, I'm just allowing this darkness to come ahead of it, right? So I have... Let me show you this in just a second. I'll bring it up real close for you. So right here we have we have the the frontmost trees are these two trees here. And then we have a row of trees behind it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this and I'm gonna try and draw while I'm holding it like this. I'm gonna try and get this shadowy area. I'm just drawing a quick little sketch that you can see where I'm gonna go to. And I'm doing it really light so that way, I don't even know if you can see that. I'm doing it really light so that way it won't actually compete with the artwork once I'm done. 
but you can just see I'm going to the edge of the tree trunk line in order to create my shadow and that's exactly how I did it here you can see I have the frontmost trees here and then in the shadowy area the rest of the tree trunks live there so I'm just gonna do that again right here you focus that bad boy Alrighty, so now it's just a matter of darkening up this shadowy area with this lovely color. And you'll see, as usual, I work in many layers. This is just the first layer of many. So I'm just laying in a gentle color. I'm going fairly light. My pressure is light to medium pressure. And the reason why is because I will darken this up later. I want to blend in some other color tones. Okay, so I don't want to extend that too much farther beyond the tree line because the what we're doing is here, this is the cast shadow for the foliage of the trees. So the tree leaves are blocking the sun and so it's creating a cast shadow so i don't want to go too much farther beyond the tree trunk line you can go a little bit farther but to create the illusion of depth like they're coming off of the paper you really want to stick to that tree trunk line and since the light is coming from this way you can go a little bit farther this way then this way. This way will look a little funny. I actually made a mistake and did that and had to correct for it. Um, but don't make the same mistake I did. Just go this way if you're going to extend out. So here I'll extend out just a little bit beyond so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. And now what we're doing it's just basically giving an irregular amorphous shape. So let's do that up here actually. You don't want it to be a straight line. There are rarely, if ever, straight lines in nature. The only one that I know of offhand is the horizon line and that's actually a slight curve. So you never want to make every, anything like super straight, especially if it's a natural element like a tree or grass or anything that grows. Um, that kind of stuff, nature isn't perfect, so don't draw it perfect, because it won't look, it won't look real. Um, okay, so we have some depth coming, but let's keep going on this. I think I drew a tree trunk back there that I just... Okay, unfortunately... The rest of the video got corrupted. Um, the There's actually a portion of the video which is very weird. It's got like crazy color bar action happening or whatever. Anyway, so I've salvaged what I could of the video. So you see, I've jumped a little bit. I finished up the shadow below the tree line. And um, so now I'm, and I filled in the trunks the tree trunks. Um, so now what I'm doing here is I'm just adding shadow uh, to the to the area just below the foliage line and I'm also adding shadow just to the left of each tree trunk and this will give it a, again an illusion of depth. Um, so I'm just filling those in and I'm really sorry that my video got corrupted. Um, I really don't know why this is happening. I've been Googling it and there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of people out there experiencing this problem. Um, but I will do my best to try to still provide you guys with great videos. And um, maybe I should go out and invest in a camera. Um, you know, my cell phone probably isn't the best thing to use for this. Anyway, so now I'm swapping over to a red-brown. So that I, th I believe that this is terracotta. And what I'm doing is I'm just adding more detail and I'm just deepening up those shadows and adding just a tinge of red to the shadows. And what, what this does is because red is a complementary color to green, it really makes the, the tree trunks pop off of the, um, 
off of the page and also just provides better contrast. So then I'm going to go ahead and take this same pencil and also add in some background trees in the shadowy parts. So here you can just do uh, like a rectangular or even just a straight line. Um, and the trick here is just to make sure that they're behind, they stop behind the frontmost trees at the very um, edge of the, that uh, shadow line. So as long as they're behind, as long as they're in those shadows and they're behind the other trees, this will look very realistic. And um, so another thing you want to keep in mind is make sure to vary the sizes and shapes because no trees are exactly the same. So um, you just want to make sure that they look different. So I'm going to keep going. The more you add, the more the better it looks because it's a forest. So you want to add lots of trees. So um, yeah, you can add a, like long and skinny trees and short and stumpy trees. Uh, the trick to uh, making it look natural is to give it a lot of variation. All right, so now what am I going to do next? I don't even know because I'm watching it with you. Okay, oh, okay, so I'm probably going to work on the, yeah, the shadows of the trees. So even though the trees are in shadow, um, oh wait, maybe I'm working on the shadowy shadow. Oh, okay. Yep, so that's what I'm doing. I'm darkening up the um, shadows below the trees. So uh, the cast shadow onto the grass. Uh, I'm just deepening that up. Uh, now that I see what color the tree trunks are, I feel like I can get away with a, a lot darker of a color. Oh, don't color off camera, Laura. Oh, what are you doing? All right, guys. Well, sorry. I guess I've lost track of where my paper is and I'm coloring off camera and that's really my bad. Uh, I thought I would, did pretty good with this one. Okay. Well, here I come back on camera so you can see I'm just darkening up uh, the shadow areas so that way uh, it really feels like, like there's some depth and darkness. And the trick with creating realism and realistic effects is really in the highlights and shadows. You can get the midtones wrong, um, you know, value is important, but if you get all the highlights right and all the shadows right, then um, your midtones can be fudged a little bit and that's okay. Um, so just so you know, if, if you're struggling and you want to know what's the most important thing, then I would work on sh the very bright brights and the very dark darks first and then figure out your midtones, um, you know, through that process. Okay, so it looks like I'm reframing. I am such a goofball. I don't know why you guys watch my videos. Okay, so... <laughs> Alright, here we go. It's in, it's in the frame again. We've got, we've got a... Okay, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm really sorry. I think I'm talking about how the light um, cre creates a cast shadow from the tree trunk onto the grass. So hopefully that's what I'm going to do next. Yep. Okay. Yeah, luckily I just made this video so I haven't forgotten everything. Um, so even though the trees are in shadow from the foliage of the leaves above, um, you still want to ground the trees in space and give them a little bit of a cast shadow. So this is what I'm doing and it doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, if it's a little bit fluffy, that's good because it's probably in the grass, right? So the grass is not like one straight solid shape, so... All right, and now what are we going to do next? Starting to look better. Um, well, guys, I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I was probably just picking colors. Okay, yep, so I've moved to the foliage now. And at this point, I'm just trying to make everything, uh, bring everything um, to the right value, the, the right tone. Um, so what I'm doing is um, creating more darkness in the areas where it would be the most shadowy. So um, keeping in mind our light source is coming from the top right. I, I'm, I'm shadowing everything on the bottom left. Um, and just trying to create volume 
by giving circular motions, jibby jabby motions. Um, you know, you, it looks better um, when you're drawing leaves. If you're not going to draw each individual leaf, to kind of make the coloring irregular and varied, because that if you look, if you squint your eyes or if you take off your glasses if you're blind like I am, then um, those those shapes in the trees are really really irregular. Like you're not going to see a nice smooth looking tree. Um, so let's let's not make it smooth either when we draw it. Um, so you can see I'm I'm kind of just scribbling really just doing whatever um, and that's what's fun about drawing trees I think is that they really don't require a lot of precision um, so anybody can achieve this kind of look by just kind of scribbling a little bit now keep in mind I'm not pressing really really hard um, so you don't want to and and I'm layering too so even though I'm scribbling and being messy I'm also keeping in mind that I do want to cover all of the whites of the paper. So you see, I'm just getting in all those little nooks and crannies where I still have white in the paper and just trying to get that all resolved. Um, so just, and here I am evening out a little area sometimes, so it is an adjustment. Okay, so now to create volume in the other tree, since the one tree is in front, um, I'm going to create a shadow on the tree that's behind it. I jump all over the place when I'm coloring and when I'm drawing too and painting actually um, so it's kind of hard to follow sometimes I'm sorry about that. But this tree here you can see even though I've blended them together they are two distinct different trees so I'm going to give a little bit of a shadow between them to kind of differentiate the two shapes a little bit better. And now I'm going to move over to the other trees and continue on through. And so I'm just using the contours that I've already drawn to give me an idea of where I'm going to put the shadows. So everywhere that I've drawn one of those fluffy lines on the, the bottom right, I'm filling that out with dark. And all right, so now let's see. I'm just working my way up, and I st always start in the darkest areas and work my work my way towards the lighter areas because. Um, knowing how dark it is will allow you to then know how light you need to make it, if that makes sense. And I'm still avoiding that little white circle that holds the name. I will add to that later, but right for right now. Okay. So now I have some nice, fluffy, irregular looking foliage shapes. And now I'm going to start working my way towards the lighter area. And this just takes time, layers, you can see I move all over the place. Basically wherever catches my eye I'm working on. Alright, centered the page. Oh, but now I'm out of focus. Well, <laughs> I'm in focus on my hand, but that's not fun. Oh well. But you can see I'm just continuing on through. Uh-huh. Just trying to get rid of that white that's down there. Anywhere where there's like too much white will give an illusion, that it will break the illusion rather. So we want to make sure. The 
that it's all, all covered. Looking better? Okay, I don't know what I'm doing now, but I'm probably just chatting about something. It's funny how the, the uh, audio is so garbled. I don't really know why that is. Why is it doing that? <laughs> I'm really chit chatting. All right, here we go. Okay, so I was probably talking about the light tones. All right, so let me tell you what I was talking about. So for right, since I started, I've been mostly using very bluish green tones. So now I want to separate out the color between the shadow and the foliage. So by going over it with this apple green color, uh, it's a very, very warm yellowy green. By, by going over it and um, kind of, it changes the way that the color looks. It really does. It warms it up. And this helps separate the shadows from um, the, the leaves there. So you can see it's starting to really pop forward. And that's because here's a little color theory trick for you, um, a little nugget of knowledge, if you will. Uh, <laughs> um, in color theory, uh, you just want to um, take note that cool colors recede into the background and warm colors come forward. So that's why I've done this. Looks like I wasn't happy with how, um, like, kind of cotton ball fluffy that shape was. So I'm also just giving some more darker um, shadows, you know, just vary it up and make it more regular looking. Um, so it's funny how I can adjust as I go, but, um, the, yeah, it just makes it more tree-like looking. Yep. All right, so now probably swapping, yep, swapping back over to the, the um, apple green. And covering all of the white now, even the lightest, lightest whites. You want to get that nice spring green color. And now I'm going to probably, yep, vary and just uh, add more shadows. And I, I believe I'm using grass green here, which is a cooler green. Just, again, working through any area where maybe it needed to be darker. Yeah, I'm just, I'm also burnishing some of it at this point to get rid of the tooth. Uh, yep, yeah, just, but not up here. Um, just down below. Um, sometimes I like to show the tooth of the paper through the, the, it really does depend on the texture of the object that I'm working on, but here because they're leaves and they do have some shimmer shiny um, reflective quality sometimes, I'm totally fine with leaving the tooth of the paper. So you can see some white still coming through. Um, a lot of people don't like that look. Um, I prefer to burnish the page when things are smooth, but when they're rough like this, um, it, I feel like there's some nice uh, effect that happens when you when you leave it a little rougher. Uh, almost looks like more natural. Um, so it really does depend on the texture. Also, in doing things like clouds, I tend to leave the texture of the paper, but, um, yep. Okay, so it looks like I'm just sort of, now that I have my darks pretty much where they need to be, maybe I'll darken it up a little bit uh, more, but for the most part, it's starting to take shape. Um, now that I've gotten that down, I'm starting to work in this uh, circle area that I created for my, for my name, for my forest name. Oh, look, I misspelled it too. That's great. Okay. Well, whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, it's a great demo, huh? <laughs> hey, you know, I do my best. We're all human. 
Okay, so I'm swapped back over to apple green and I'm just going to um, work in the lighter areas and you'll see um, I will eventually fill in that white area with the name. Yeah, here I go. I'm going to fill it in with a really light layer of this apple green color just to again give it um, harmony with the um, other areas. I really don't like showing the white of the paper. Um, you will very rarely ever see pure white from me on my pages. Um, and the reason why is I just don't feel like it happens that much in life. So um, I try to uh, really get rid of that white as much as I can. So now I'm being pretty messy actually, using the flat side of the pencil to just quickly lay in some tone and color. Um, not pressing hard, but just rather kind of just going wherever, wherever I feel is needing to be a little bit darker. Um, this color really does warm it up quite a lot, and I think it makes it look really nice. Um, so I don't know what I'm doing now. I'm probably talking again. Oh, and I'm off camera. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, I'm probably just fixing up some small things. Well, anyway, that's pretty much the end of the video. Um, I'm really sorry that it got corrupted. However, I want to show you the final piece. So here it is. And, um... Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that this was helpful, even though all the video problems happened. Um, I hope that you found this useful in some way. And um, check back. Now, I I know I'm not doing my video series, uh, my tutorial series yet, but um, I will be picking that up in January. Um, but for right now, I'm focusing on finishing up my Ivy and the Inky Butterfly. So you can catch me doing that tomorrow. And I'm really, really, really excited for this video tutorial series, so um, keep sending in those suggestions. Don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to keep making these videos. So um, if you don't like the talky videos, I will be adding some more speed uh, coloring videos. So um, just check it out, and thank you so much. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Uh, I love you guys. Okay, bye.